Okay, so, um, first off, I am not a YouTuber. This isn't a channel that you can subscribe to, really. Um, I'm just testing out to see if, uh, if this is going to look good. Anyway, I am an eBay commission guy, and I sell collections. And a week ago, we started listing um, tons of Dungeons & Dragons books. And today... A good portion of them are going to sell about two hours worth every two minutes an item is going to pop and we're just going to go right over the listings I'm going to add them into my spreadsheet so I can do the accounting as we go along and just see the results this is more hardcore data for guys who want to sell things on eBay start them at one penny a piece and see how they go I personally have been doing collections for a long time and this is just the way I prefer to do it. Um, you get a lot of interest if you do everything as kind of an auction within eBay auctions itself. Um, I use it as a tool to kind of um, run my own auctions. So I mentioned in every single listing that there's tons of other auctions of the same thing um, up for sale at the same time. And when they see everything's going for a penny, um, they just go ahead and they look at everything. So um, that's pretty much what we're going to be going over today. Um, you'll see right here, first we have some AEG books that are going to sell um, right, right off the get-go. And we're going to move down into some Pathfinder and some Mongoose late, later today. And then tomorrow and the days after that, we'll bring up the real D&D books. Um, the stuff that will sell a lot better. This is just a soft opening being on a Monday. Um, I didn't want to put too many items up for sale. People want to get to the bank and go grocery shopping for after, after the weekend. So we started off kind of light. Um, but anyway, right now um, I'm just going to go to the first auction. Yep, come on in. Hold on, I got someone here. This is the auction that's going to end first. Once you hit the X, you'll see all the other options, then you can click on, on the next one. You can watch them as, as they end. We're going to be doing the same thing here. And just sit there real quiet, and um, when you got to get up and leave, just, just go. All right, so here we are at the auction, uh, my store page, and this will be the first item going up, and we have four minutes and 20 seconds to go. So I'm going to go ahead and grab the title, and it's lot number 400, go to my spreadsheet. 400, paste that in. And you guys will just have to deal with my spreadsheet. It's just the way it's going to have to work this time until I get another uh, monitor hooked up. Alright, back to the options. 3 minutes and 45 seconds. Um, so basically, uh, Secrets is one of the more rare of the AEG books. I've seen them listed for up to $79 and no sales at that price um, that I've seen. I think the best sale I've seen was $45 bucks at Buy It Now, but everything else came in much lower. So $36 really isn't that bad. Um, I don't think it's going to advance much more than that, but it's quite possible. Anyway, um, I'll take you through real quick some of the listings that are going to end tonight. So we have the AEG stuff coming up first, which is actually pretty nice stuff. Uh, Pinnacle, uh, not, not, not Pinnacle, uh, A AEG and Pinnacle are uh, both making some pretty nice books. I've never actually played any of these. The War is iconic. I remember seeing this cover all all over the place in the past. 
And later on, we got some uh, math, uh, Pathfinder map packs and flip maps. These aren't doing that well, actually. It's kind of surprising. Um, prices are pretty good in uh, the eBay stores, uh, as far as like 20 bucks a piece, 16, 30, 35 bucks. And you'll sell a couple of them that way, but they don't, most of them don't move. And when you force the sale, um, they are going to come in much lower. But to get all the, the books um, sold for somebody in a certain time frame, I got to kind of do it this way. Um, most people, when they sell their collection, they just want to sell the whole thing at one time. Or, um, or they don't want to pug it out. You know, they just want the money real quick and they take so much less cash. Um, because they're making this uh, sale so big that only a few people can purchase it and it's usually people who want to um, go ahead and flip it for themselves and make some money. So what I do is I separate everything out. Um, one item per auction listing most of the time. Sometimes I'll lock stuff up and just let it fly. Um, it goes over pretty well most of the time. You know, some things are going to suck real bad and some things are going to go over real well. Um, but that's just the nature of the game. But at the end, I can say, hey, we sold everything individually, but I sold them all at the same day or same time frame, and boom, he gets that one big chunk of cash that he was trying to find in the first place, and usually a bit more. Even after I take my percentage, they usually end up getting, you know, 20 to 30, sometimes up to 200% uh, more. But, um, yeah, other than that, let's see what else we got. Oh, I need to zoom this. That first item should be done. Oh, so we got 30 seconds left. This is actually kind of cool. Before, I would have to keep hitting refresh for me to see my own listing tip down like this it couldn't be done now I can actually see it myself which is kind of cool so first time ever no advancement on 36 no so we'll enter 36 into the spreadsheet and we'll move on to the next book which will be the wilds don't know too much about this book, not a lot of interest in it so far, but $9 isn't bad. I think that's a pretty good deal for a D20 book that these aren't really collectible as of yet. Um, they still have tons of gameplay, of course, but I wouldn't put them in the collector realm as of just yet. So I'm going to copy that, 401, paste. Where's the price? Go back. One minute and five seconds. Yeah, I don't think this one will uh, advance either. Quite possible though. I did put the kind of stinkers up front. Um, like I said, it was being a Monday. I really wanted to um, just put up the kind of cannon fodder stuff to just get people interested with a couple of gems in there um, Tuesday tomorrow Wednesday and Thursday should hit really big on the D&D &D stuff again usually during the first part of the day I listed you know stuff that's not going to go over quite as well but down in the heart of the listings maybe halfway through or 75 percent of the way through is when we'll start seeing the really gem D and D books uh, pop up, and um, then I have maybe ten left on a Friday night, which is all the first edition. I didn't even want to list it on Friday, but I had to, and nothing. So, oh, nope, we got fifty. All right, that's not so bad. I'll take every little bit. Zero. And then uh, next book. No, I don't like this. And next book. 
toolbox. And 1057 watchers, that's not too bad. Again, I'll take the title. 1050. And this was 402. Paste. Uh, I'm going to jinx myself and already put in the 1050. Go back to the list. 51 seconds. So yeah, you'll see down here. Down here I put that I was doing all these books and I put it in every single listing so anybody that looks knows oh my god he's got tons of stuff up um, I'll save them combined shipping of course I don't really want any extra money off of shipping once in a while I make a dollar or two but usually I lose it's just the way it goes um, and I put the title cover price you know, how many pages are in it, and the condition, and the shipping stuff down here. Usually, oh, did we have a sale? Ooh, that went up, 1550. I like, I like jinxing myself. I'll go back in and we'll fix this. Boom. Go to the next one. Mercenaries. I was hoping this one would sell for more than 325. I think it will. I think it'll go up. That's a pretty good buck. Copy. And that is 403. Paste. And I'm not going to put a price this time. So yeah, um, if you look down at the bottom of every page, there's my store, the one penny auction category that we have. And that's pretty much it. Um, basically, I'm doing this video so when a customer has, hey, I have a huge, I have a huge collection I want to sell, and um, what's the best way to do it? I can actually just point to the video and say, hey, this is how I do it. Um, put everything for one penny a piece, start them two minutes uh, apart, you know, and, and let them fly. Um, mention that you're doing a whole bunch of them. Don't just put up one listing. Um, you know, eBay prices are ridiculous sometimes. So when they see something's at one penny, when they go take a look and see, oh, wait a minute, this guy listed four or five hundred things at one penny, then they're going to go ahead and take a look at everything you got in the store. Uh, if they're a hardcore gamer. Come on, advancement on 325. 650. Alright, that's not too bad, but doubled. Next point, five, zero. Next book. What I'm looking at is... Feats. I didn't have much hopes for this book. Um, nothing too particularly interesting about it. Some people are really big on the role-playing feats. Um, never really mattered in any of the campaigns that I played in. You know, we were playing old first edition, regular AD&D, um, old old school D&D, and uh, I think up to second edition, and that was still the old Thacko system. So feats weren't really a huge thing back then. I actually prefer the old red box set, 1983. You know, beautiful box set. Less rules is more. Um, as long as you're working with a bunch of creative guys or playing with them, um, doesn't matter what your game rule set is, you're gonna have a good time. So just keeping it simple is really cool. I mean, do you really need a thousand D&D books? Not really. You basically just need the players, the DMs, and the monster manual, and even those 
most people have played so many times they know the stuff off of the back of their hand you know um, it's not really a big deal oh 650 let's see we'll take this one four copy I'll put it in no I didn't paste and what do we have come on advancement on 650 like I said, that's more than I was expecting anyway. 650. No last second bids. Which is okay. 650 really isn't that bad. Not for, you know, just regular run of the mill AEG books. Alright, what do we have next? Guilds. This book actually looked kind of cool. You don't see too many guild books in any of the uh, fantasy uh, lineups that I've seen. Um, I mean, I've heard of guild wars, but not usually guild books. So this is a kind of a, a unique little book to have. I'm go ahead and take that and number 405 paste and wait for the price so 1044 that's not too bad I think we'll get an advancement on that seems a little low pretty conditioned book let's see uh, 90% in perfect condition, light wear. Corners are somewhat sharp and light. Edge wear is light medium. Initials on the inside cover, but no other writings or markings. Pages are clean, white, bright. Binding a solid price sticker on the back. Marked down mainly because of the initials and the edge wear. And yeah, you can see, you know, there's a little bit of edge wear going on in there. Being a, a grader, I have to be as picky as possible. So I call that. Yeah, that's pretty light medium. Let's see what the back looks like. Yeah, that's that's a pretty good looking look. Fifteen fifty. Take it. Alright, let's get out of here. Going to the next one. Dungeons. Go on the spreadsheet. Fifteen fifty. Go back to dungeons, pick out the title, copy, ooh, 1635 already. That's doing way better than I thought it would originally. So definitely not disappointed there. And this is 406. Paste. condition on this 88% so when I'm doing condition I really take my time and I look at every corner look at the binding look at the pages flip through all the pages real quick I mean I don't read every single page but I do give it a flip uh, quick flip through uh, make sure there's no writings markings so soiling stains um, you know but Occasionally I'm going to miss one because you just don't see it. Sometimes their ink matches the ink on the book and just blends in and, and you don't see it. But you get to understanding the collector when you're selling their stuff. So like some collectors I know, oh god, there's going to be writing in every single thing that they have because they just like making notations. And some people really enjoy those uh, notations in the book. Most don't. Um, for instance, with these books, every single one of them, just about, in this collection, has that MK initial up, up in the top. Not good for pricing. It's a D&D &D book, it's playable, it's not a comic book, so it's not super detrimental. Ooh, look at that, 2067. To the next one. 
yeah, it's not super detrimental. Um, because there's still a role playing function, you read, you're supposed to pick them up and read them and go scroll through them and, um, you know, ha handle them and stuff, especially when you're playing. So that really doesn't mean that much, especially if you, you know, pop a little sticker on the corner there. Um, it's really not a big deal. But, you know, um, I still have to have a very solid grading system. Um, to me, Barnes & Noble, new on the shelf, the average book is between 90 and 97%. Ninety-eight, ninety-nine, are almost impossible to get. I, I maybe have done fifteen, um, ninety-eights in my lifetime. Um, only one or two items at ninety-nine I've ever graded, and absolutely zero at a hundred percent. I've never graded anything at a hundred percent. Fifty would be the cutoff point. Fifty would be trash no collectible value whatsoever the books are barely together pages are either falling out edges are all fucked up blah 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 uh, and i try to do a nice smooth grade in between unlike C cgc or psa these grading systems that you go to um they're you know 7.5 it's actually a mint condition card it's so nitpicked, and they leave all the top end um, between the seven and the nine, and everything down below is just weird. It's kind of almost like a Richter scale. It's not a smooth gradient in between the grades. So, oh, there's a stinker at 650. And so I try to do that with games at least, a little more of a smooth way through it. And I generally don't don't get complaints, you know. I tell them what I see. I I call it the way it is. And uh, well, I don't really get complaints. Just just be fair about it. You know, take your time. If you're gonna do an eBay listing, describe what you're trying to sell, and uh, pe people will appreciate it, and the bids will come because of it. So let's see. That one was some haste. 6.50 and let's see what's next on the chopping block monster which is almost done 425 I'm hoping this one sells for more 408 What do we have? Actually, don't know anything about this book there. Again, you'll see the MK. Well, you know, you can't make the condition of the books better than they are. Um, but I can tell tell you what's there and uh, what it isn't there, and hopefully it works out for the best. Ooh, seven fifty. I'll take it. book. Yeah, this isn't too bad actually. Um, you're looking at those price, price prices for those books. This is all the low end stuff so this is stuff where usually people will bundle it together if they're selling it to their friends and cut them a price and you're pretty much going to end up somewhere around here anyway. Um, secret selling for 36 if you sell that to a friend most likely you're not going to get that so yeah, if you don't want to do the work yourself, this is the best way to do it. If you want to do the work yourself, you know, how many times you're going to be driving on uh, from meeting somebody on Craigslist, they stand you up, wasting your time. Do it the right way the first time. eBay's a great place to do stuff like that. That's where a lot of people go to get their stuff. And uh, let's see what we have here. Monster was the last one. We have dragons. Four and nine. Copy. Paste. And let's 
see what this one goes for. 750, so we're not doing too bad already. And yeah, just before the first auction today, um, the books were somewhere right around three grand. And I'm expecting all the books said and done will come between six and nine grand somewhere. Um, but there's still more books that we're going to put up at the last day of the third round. Um, and we've already done five to six thousand bucks worth of books before the auctions even started. So, oh, 1050. I'll take it. Alright, go back to here. Next one. Gods. 650. Don't know anything about this. I imagine it's uh, equivalent to the deities and demigods from AD&D, which of course, you know, is the one that ev everyone wants. The old Cthulhu and uh, Melnabonian, or however you pronounce it. Um, I actually had two of those. I sold them just before the auction dropped. Uh, it was two of the second printing deities and demigods with the Cthulhu in there but one of them had the pages all cut up on the inside there was certain pictures that were cut out of the book completely so it was an absolute loss as far as that was concerned so I figured if I put them together somebody can have one nice copy for themselves and then the second copy would be more of a a cutting up or anything like that and I figured if I didn't sell it what I was going to do was actually cut out the Cthulhu and the Melnibonian and sell them separately um, just to see what they would go for um, they're so iconic in the D&D um, guys uh, realm that um, I think they would have brought 30 to 40 bucks just for the pages you know, so I was going to give that a try, but some guy was like, hey, you know what, I, I want it, I've got a great condition book, but the cover sucks. And he was willing to go ahead and uh, pull them apart and fix them, so he's going to get uh, two books out, out, out of it, and then he can still sell the pages. So it's not a complete loss for him. I think I sold that for 225 which was pretty standard. Uh, going price on those books isn't really that big. So 750 for gods. Could have been better. Could have been worse though. Paste. Seven point five zero. Awesome. Get rid of it. Go to evil. Evil was one I had hopes for until I saw and maybe I can get it up here no, you can see yeah little scratches right there on the cover and those are actually scratches scratches you run your finger across them you can feel feel them you can see the different light reflections on the side never really enjoyed that corners aren't that bad though no decent and usually anything with the evil necromancer or anything named to it sells for more but this being a little imperfect I don't think it's going to do so well let me go ahead grab it copy for 11 paste and let's see what we have 30 seconds I'm going to guess 10.50 Let's see how many watchers. Ooh, it doesn't even say. That's not good. Never really made sense to me as to why sometimes you get the watchers right here and sometimes you won't. I don't know if you have to meet a certain requirement, a minimum amount, but... Uh, Realm of Weaver. I do believe I've seen him before. Oh. Oh, shit. Sniped out, not for much more. Seven seventy five. Go to the next one. War. Yeah. I 
think people are bitten on this one just for the, just for the iconic cover. I can't remember where I've seen it though. But I've seen it a whole bunch. It brings back this memory. I just can't remember where. Um, but yeah, it's definitely an iconic co cover to me. Let's see. We'll copy. 412. Paste. Boom. Anyway, what was the condition on this one? 79%. You can see those kind of ripples and stress marks. A little bit of wear up there, a little doggy ring. Up at the corner, I'd probably call that light medium wear. Let's see what I have here. Corners, corners, uh, light medium wear. One corner took a hit. Let's see if it's on the back. Nope. So yeah, basically it's just that one top corner. Initial, yeah, no fun. Ten dollars, come on, advance. Ten fifty. I think that was actually at three twenty-five this morning. So that's good. Get rid of that. Get rid of that. I'm dead. Mm. Once again, Undead Eagle, and it's not selling for a bunch more. Very odd. But that may be because it's not uh, an official Dungeons and Dragons product like um, the Book of Evil Deeds sells for a ton, you know, it's real easy sell, Book of Exalted Deeds, um, what was the, the Fiendish co co Codex is selling for a ton of cash, actually I have both of them coming up later on, um, I think on Thursday, so we'll see those sell and we'll know exactly what they're actually worth because I list them at a penny. Okay, let me pull this up, and then Copy. Forty one seconds. Um, Beast Man. Okay. Seven Watchers. It's here this time. Eighty nine percent. Perfect condition. It's where we are. Very little corner neck up there. A little bit of waviness down there. Overall, pretty good books. This guy kept his collection in good shape. What I do like is the fact that um, he didn't write in his books. It made it so much easier on me to flip through a book knowing that he didn't write in them. You know, there was a couple that had some pencil marks here and there. Uh, a stray no notation once in a while. Um, the bad thing that happened was is he post he put post-it notes on everything. So I had to pull tons of post-it notes out of the books. Actually, my helper did it, and um, so that was kind of a pain in the ass. But the upside is none of that's in the book. That's what matters when you go to sell your collection. Um, you put your name in there, you're going to limit the amount of bidders right off the bat. I think I had eight different people contact me this time and ask me if everything was um, uh, an initialed on the inside cover. And I was like, yeah, like 85% 80, of the collection is, you know, and they didn't want anything to do with it. So we lost them as bidders. But... A lot of people just want to play. They don't care about it. Like I said, you can put a sticker all over it. Another 1050 book. I'll take that. That makes me happy. Next book, Magic. And this one had some issues. Uh, 
you can see right there that corner is a little janked you know for a newer book if it was an older book that's not really much but since it's relatively newer it's you know I had to mark it down a little bit of janked up corner down there um, front back not not too bad initial and I probably put this at 89 so relatively good good condition 1250 I'll take it oh maybe I gotta take the thing first AEG books are done, and now we're on to Pathfinder map packs. These were the worst selling so far. Uh, least amount of page views, least amount of likes, least amount of watchers, um, other than the Star Wars WizKids cards, and most of those were built. That's just canon far anyway. Um, but I was really concerned about these map packs. Uh, a lot of people just don't use them. Um, there are some people, hardcore fans, who's got to have them all. Um, but for the most part, they just weren't doing well to so to see. Most of them go from they were at two bucks this morning um, to even ten. Has been real nice. Um, if I can keep my average above ten, and when we start hitting the expensive stuff then the average should start being 17 to 24 dollars a book um, covering all this stuff but if I took severe losses on the uh, Pathfinder it was going to be hard to make that that money up on the tail end um, so to see these coming in a little better is nice uh, copy 150 150 paste and I think that was 10 bucks oh 1850 I'll take that next get rid of it map pack yeah see 275 225 there's a couple in the tens 550 225 we still have a long way to go with a couple of these right, we'll go to 1050 147 Damn. Yeah, these were all still brand new. You can see the original price was thirteen ninety nine, but that was what probably 10, 20 years ago. So these have kind of gotten a little on the collectible side. Sealed is still real nice to see. Uh, I think we have a bunch of op opened up ones that we're going to sell on the third round of the auctions we have. But uh, we had a whole bunch of these. I listed them up. I thought they were great. You know, I love seeing these maps with the little squares on on them and um, playing with miniatures. To me, is a lot of fun. You get that nice little visual aid. Let's see. Six seconds. Five. Nineteen fifty. Yeah. That's a nice jump in the last seconds. Next one. Evil Ruins. 146. Copy. Put it in the spreadsheet. And go right back. 
You can see what it kind of looks like on the back. 18 tile cards equal one big map. Kind of a cool idea. I wouldn't say I'm too particularly fond of, fond of it. But I don't know. I think it's just better the 24 by 30 mats. You lay it out one piece staying together. These, they slide around. They're kind of a pain in the ass. When it's contained little rooms, uh, shapes of rooms and stuff, then it's it's an awesome thing to have. But when it's one great big picture anyway, why, why put 18 of them together? I mean, you could tape them, but then you destroy the product. You know, it kind of looked cool. I'm sure if it was done right. Um, so, yeah, I just thought this was kind of a weird idea. Um, we should have just put it on paper or a soft mat or something of the sort. So. But, you know, Path Pathfinder's been putting out pretty good products and not everything can be a winner. But these are winning for me today so far. 1550. Yeah. I'm liking this. More than the guy originally paid. And that's if he didn't have a discount. If he was paying full price, which I've never seen a gamer pay full price for anything. Um, at least new when it comes out. Every game store, 20% off. Noble Knights get a hold of them you probably get 35 percent off for anything brand new or pre-ordered or anything like that so when the actual price of the product was 13 14 bucks and we're getting 15 50 19 50 i'm doing pretty good for the for this guy and this isn't like i said this isn't even the real collectible stuff yet that D, &D stuff coming up later on um Thursday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Friday. Those are going to be our best sellers. Anyway, let's see what this is. That pack is gone. We're going to go to the next one, which is... The Slums. I was hoping this one would do really well. I just kind of like the name. And I'll show you the back of it. For some reason, I just really wanted this one to do well. Um, I think it actually had the most uh, page views when it was just sitting in my store. But we'll see. M43. Paste. 12 seconds. Um, I'm going to say 15.50 again. <coughs> Seventeen fifty, I'll take it. Next, somewhere in here there'll be a little break too. Um, usually, I'll only do twenty-seven, twenty-eight items every, every hour, every two minutes. Um, at the end of the hour, I try to skip two listings. So you have a grand total of six minutes to get up, go to the bathroom, do whatever you want. Sometimes I do it, sometimes I don't, but for the most part, you get that little in intermission. Uh, let's see what we have here. Yeah, these were the ones I was really concerned about, the flip mats. You see, this is a pretty decent product. Like, why the cards would be selling for more than these is beyond me. Um, maybe they don't sit so flat? I'm not quite sure. But they got some really cool ones. They got, you know, um, different buildings and arcane ruins. And um, there was one that was even just dungeon, like a whole dungeon. Um, maybe, you know, a smaller one, but it was still a dungeon. Like, I don't know, that's actually kind of cool. 245. So we'll move up here, 245. Paste. 
and we'll see what it solves for. Uh, I don't know. I don't know if it's going to advance or not. No watchers doesn't tell me here. We had 33 views, so that's not too bad. Now that's just real views. There's all kinds of other lookers and stuff. Their new counting system absolutely blows. Their old counting system absolutely blows. Oh, 1250. So that was seven dollars up in the last ten seconds. All right. Get rid of that. Go to the next one. Bow. Ships. Now this is one where I love personally maps of ships. Um, later on, I believe in the third round, we're going to be getting to some Judges Guild stuff, and there's um, uh, an adventure called Morgan, I believe the name is, and it's got two boat maps inside, or two maps with lots of boats on them. On the, on the inside. Really cool. Um, oh no, wait, that was... Um, the Mordian had different maps. That was like the Lost Ark or Lost Ships or something, something like that. Um, really cool, but we'll have that co coming up. Um, I like seeing and, and anytime somebody does a scale model ship or something like that. I'm not even a big pirate fan, but these things are just fantastic. So miniature gaming on them is like a lot of fun. So I'm hoping this one do does well, sticking with the theme of boats. I had a couple of boat things come, come up, but nothing too much this time. So 244. Copy. Paste. Come on. Ooh, 1850. Yeah, that's more like it. Now, I think these ones were actually 24. Four dollars new. Where's the price tag? Twelve, no, twelve. So we did way better. All right. It's actually starting off the auction pretty good, considering we had the junky stuff up front. And that's because, like I said, I don't just put it on eBay. Put it up at one penny and let it go. You know, when you're selling a collection, you can actually take the time to go ahead and um, advertise to your Facebook groups. Like I went to the Dungeons and Dragons Facebook groups and hey, hey guys, I did all of this work. I did all the books at one penny a piece. You can choose and pick what you want. You don't have to buy the whole fucking collection. Um, you know, just go ahead and pick out the ones you want. And... Um, I've done it on my own Facebook page, of course, I have a fan following, I've been doing this for years, so I have lots of ga ga gamers that already follow my eBay shop, my Facebook page, they've been to my uh, quarterly events uh, in, in Seattle, so I tend to do pretty well with role-playing, miniatures, games, toys, stuff like that, um, but it's not the only thing I can sell. Uh, ham radios, um, if some lady had a collection of dolls, you know, three, four hundred dolls, I could easily do that. Um, and I'd do the same thing, I'd go on Facebook, I'd join the doll groups, let them know, hey, boom, 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 I'm selling all these at one time, It'd be a fun event, you can go in, purchase the ones you want, not, you know, forget about the ones you don't need. So, 2050 on 143. Twenty fifty. That's not bad. And next one. 
1650 Necropolis. Yeah. See? Go ahead. Get that undead Necropolis evil necromancer name to anything and that's what happens. Pretty predictable, actually. And that's not even sold yet, so I can't imagine that's going to go for much more. That's pretty high. So that's number 242. Paste. 44 seconds. Let's see what this one looks like. Yeah, well, nothing special. There's a map. Seal, new, minor wear. Of course, I always put minor wear just because, like I said, new, new is one of those things where it's not perfect. Um, even if Barnes & Noble gets a box, a brand new box from, let's say, TSR or which is up to the coast now. Um, I'm only going to be able to find one or two of maybe 50 of the same book. Only one or two I'm going to grade 97 and up. I mean, really, there's all kinds of imperfections in the, uh, in the manufacturing pr process. And that's why I've never graded anything at 100%. Cards, I don't really count cards because mint is mint, you know. And there's, yeah, I could go ahead and find an average five cent card, but and I can grade it at a hundred percent. But you know, that's nothing. Oh, twenty nine. Jeez, I'm grow. That's pretty good. We are. This one I liked. Ancient dungeons. Check this out. Come on. Yeah. See what I mean? Just a little dungeon. Fantastic for gameplay. This one I thought was the best one of the group. I kind of like the pirate ship one more, but this is probably the most usable, actually usable, of all, all the game mats that I've seen. All the flip mats. So we'll see what this one goes for. See that? It's super, super low. I have no idea why this one's not getting seen or liked or bid on. But that's the way the cookie crumbles. That's 241. Paste. And... 650. Come on, 650. Double. Double. I need you to double. Oh, wow. Way past doubled. Next one. Cathedral. How does this look? I like a cathedral. Nothing special. I don't think you're supposed to war game in a place of warship, but, um, you know. For those evil aligned uh, PCs, I think uh, that might be necessary. 240, 850. Boom. Come back here. Let's see. Yeah, I see 225. That one scares me. There was two of them I thought was kind of weird. So I'm going through all these maps and all of a sudden out of the game mastery maps, which look exactly the same, 
Um, actually, kind of looks like gale force wind made stuff, just made by some, uh, made for by somebody, made by them for somebody else. Um, the Rome. One of these is weird wars. Actually, both both, both of them are. Um, don't see weird war stuff much. Uh, pretty collectible. It's got some hardcore fans, but I thought that was kind of neat. Let's see. Cathedral, 1650. What was that? Cathedral, Cathedral. Is that 850? So, almost doubled. Next one, Pathfinder Lodge. I don't know about this one. Uh, I think the branding technique on this is a little, eh. but okay, we'll deal with it. Two thirty-nine. What's this one look like? Yeah, well, nothing special here. Yeah, it's kind of funny too. They hide the front of the map and the back of the map. Like, they couldn't have just put them on different ends or side by side so you can actually see the whole thing. They cover up. Well, good two thirds of one of the pictures. Not really smart. Right, here we go. Ten fifty. Eleven. Ten fifty. Yeah. So yeah, this is why we do things this way. See, if I had ended them all at the same time, nobody would get to go in there and snipe but maybe one item. They wouldn't have the time. They all ended at exactly 4 o'clock. Only one of the items you'd be able to go in, snipe it out real quick, and then they'd all be done. But if you end them every two minutes, now a person can go through, snipe one, go right down kind of the way that we're going, bid on the ones that he wants at the last second, you know. So when people end things all at the same time, I tell them that's a huge mistake. If you're dealing with a bunch of just weird random stuff that um, don't pertain to each other at all, then that's not really a big deal because they're not really looking through your store at tons of stuff to purchase, combine on shipping and, and, and whatnot. So let's see. Does it? Two thirty-eight. But if you have, um, like me, all D and D books, now they want to go and try to snipe out just the ones that they want. They're just going to keep working right down, right down the list. And I guess if you have like um, in a YouTube channel and you have a lot of viewers that watch your channel, then maybe you want to do the same thing, not end them all at the same time, end them at different times because they might go ahead and purchase a couple of things from you being, you know, a fan or, or whatnot. Ah, there we go. That went from 225 to 1550. That's the kind of pricing we were looking for. Get rid of the desert, go to theater, theater. This is going to look like a western one. Yeah, kind of. 
Ooh. I like the back though. Just wood grain like that. That's kind of cool. Hmm. Grab it. 237. And let's see, what does this sell for? I'm going to say at least $14.50. It's kind of cool. Maybe people won't like it because of that, but I'm partial to just the dry erase plain mats where, you know, draw out the friggin' room. Do it with your friend's old school style, you know. You don't have to have the best supplies to play D and D. It's never really worked that way. Um, yeah, you can go ahead and purchase all this stuff, and it is kind of fun. It's definitely a collector's thing. I mean, you purchase this stuff now, you're not wasting your money. You're wasting your money if you let it go to crap condition. But look, you know, this guy bought all of this stuff, and we're getting more for his stuff now. Of course, that has a lot to do with inflation. But, uh, 850, ooh, 2050. We'll take it. So, yeah, a lot of this stuff that was priced at 13.99, the same product today would cost 18.99 minimum. If they were to produce it and, you know, pay for labor and stuff like that. Um, so, um, you're never really doing a bad service to yourself when you're buying these old games. I know wives may complain and stuff, but the um, best way to describe it is you've probably seen the movie The 40-Year-Old Virgin and um, the black guy and his girlfriend at the end are talking about, well, yeah, now we're going to go buy some, some fucking toys, you know, because the guy in the, in the film um, has a massive toy collection that he sells and pays for his wedding and stuff like that. Um, it's just tre tremendous. Games is the same thing. Just take good care, care of it. It's going to be worth more in the long run. Alright, 2050. We'll get rid of that. Next one is... These are the Weird War ones. Weird Wars. And I have no clue if anybody even likes these. Doesn't say the watchers here. 247. Paste. Alright. Oh, four minutes. Wonder what happened then. Is that the hour? Oh, that's break time. So. Yeah, I'm going to pick this up in a couple of minutes. I'm going to go outside and smoke. I got break time. So, yeah, it looks like things are doubling or tripling at the, la at the last minute. Last seconds, things are going up and that's the crap stuff this is the stuff that i was just like not much hope for kind of put it first because something ha has to go first i want the best stuff right off the bat yeah and uh yeah actually kind of surprised cool. so i take you you get that class tonight okay. he should be here any minute Oof. So yeah, tomorrow, um, I probably won't really need you either, but if you show up, I'll put you to work, you know, I don't, I don't mind doing that, um, but at the same time, if you don't want to, don't, don't really need to, but Friday, like I said, if you want to work late and you can't get all the work done, this is going to be a big time shipping day, um, you want to work all fucking day and night, pretty much. I'll pay for a cab to get you home. Okay. You know, uh, kind of thing. If you just want to do the same five hours that you usually do, that's fine. 
Um, I'm pretty quick. I'm almost back up to par as far as shipping. So that's good. You know, I can't do little things like pull that down. My hand just won't undo it and hold it at the same time. Uh, yeah, looks like there's somebody put rice in my life. <laughs> Little bugs. Yeah. yeah. When they, when I first moved in here, all all these lights were dark. Mm -hmm. I mean, they they didn't work. As oh, soon as they put on these lights, man. Holy moly, the bugs came out of nowhere. All right, so back in looks like the first one sold for twelve twenty six. Okay, An odd number. The next one. 
should be done. 850 for 246. Paste. 850. That's not too bad, I guess. Nah, they can't all be winners. Next one. Should have a couple of seconds left. Deep Forest. This one will probably sell well. People are always into the forest maps. And there we go. 30 seconds left. Let's see what this one looked like. Yeah, little river on one side. That's not bad. Looks like a little circle stonehenge thing in there. Not, not, nothing too special. Seven seconds. Four, three, and nothing. No, I didn't think so. 15.50 was pretty good for that one. I was hoping for more, but didn't work. Next is Arena. I think this is the Gladiator Pit style arena. Yep, front and back, nothing too special. De de decent little map, though I could see where you, you could actually use this one for gameplay. 234. Oh, this one. 234. Paste. Now I think one of these may have sold previously. So I might be missing a spot here on my accounting sheet. I still have to go back and do all the sales that um, we had before the auction. You know, when I was posting them in my store regular price, I priced them pretty high because I don't want people to just keep buying. I want to get these things listed, not shipping out. And once they're all listed, then we auction them and ship them out. So I just kind of put the price high thinking, you know, they'll stay away. But if they're going to make an offer, it's a decent offer on the product, I'll go ahead and I'll sell it if I think it's higher than what we're going to get at, at uh, the time this stuff sells, like now. Then I'll go ahead and I'll sell it and I'll ship out one or two things here, here or there. Well, we sold probably about 75 to 85 things before the auction started. So, I'll have to go back and add all those into the accounting sheet. Should have had it done, but I was busy listing. 950, 1350. We'll take it. Any advancement is a good advancement. It looks like a lot of these are going for double, some of them triple, quadruple, some of them not, not at all. But all we need is the really low priced ones to come up to a respectable range. The Dungeons and Dragons stuff will do its thing. I have no fear on those. Um, never really had a bad auction when I've done D&D books because of the way I do it, you know. So, you know, if anybody out there has a collection of something, could be Pez dispensers, Matchbox, Micro Machines, um, anything where it's a large number of the same kind of product. Um, there was one lady I contacted, unfortunately she wasn't in interested. She had hundreds and hundreds of model kits for old Pontiacs and Buicks and stuff like that. Um, she was an estate sale chick and somebody had passed away and he had maybe 800, 900 model cars still brand new in the box for the most part. No, she was selling them for 80% off of retail if you buy enough of them. And I'm like, whoa, whoa, lady, you know, you're kind of going about this wrong with uh, uh, inflation. 
these same cars are way more now and new in the box and these ones are are collectible now so you should be getting 50% more than what the price is not 50% less or 80% that's ridiculous so I was trying to get her to, to get me her stuff but no, she just really wasn't into it you know okay Pathfinder Lodge is done which one are we on People on this one. Ooh. Urban Tavern sold at 21, 29, 33. Paste. 21, 29. Get rid of it. So ecologies. Now we're finally into you know a little bit of books. This is a Dungeons and Dragons official book made by Paizo. Paizo. However you want to pronounce it. Oh, what was the number on that? 383. We're gonna have to go. Way down here, 383. Boom, paste. And yeah. So this is basically the Pathfinder company put out a DD book. It's actually kind of neat. Reminds me of a trade paperback of, of a co comic book. It's done in that same fo format. It's actually kind of cool. I wasn't expecting it to go this high. Like that's full retail, just about another dollar. It's full retail, so um, and it's not too particularly collectible. It's decent, but um, monster ecologies. I mean, that's kind of cool. If you're a dungeon master, I mean, you're definitely gonna want to pick something up like that just for the read. Let's see, what do we have? That's what I thought. That's a pretty good price for that. Next. Come on, get off of there. Judges Guild, Citadel Fire. Um, these later Judges Guild items are kind of neat because they put out so many items back in the 70s and 80s that uh, there's a lot of whatever that they did make. Not a super lot, but a, f a fair amount. You can find them pretty regularly. You know, a little scarce, but you still come up with them. But the later stuff that they did is lower print runs for sure, because I just don't see as many for sale. Um, the ones that do sell don't sell tremendously well, but they have some pretty neat stuff. This uh, Judges Guild slash Goodman Games working with each other is actually pretty cool shit. Um, Goodman Games actually has become one of my favorite companies out there. Um, my last favorite company, which is still my favorite to this day, uh, Iron Crown Enterprises. Um, these guys are coming in a close second. Uh, I got that big DCC book. Uh, big base rule book that they had. I thought that was fantastic. And then their modules that they've been doing. Um, they've actually been a big hit so far on here. As far as page views and likes. Um, they haven't sold yet, so I don't know how well they're going to do. Seven, Citadel of Fire, 1150. Not too bad. 382. 382. Ah, shit. Pick it up. Boost. That was at 1150. Get out of there. Ah, ultimate. Uh, these ones were scaring me. 
look like decent books. Mongo's great company. Um, me medium in interest in these so far. I wouldn't say there's a lot of interest, but about half of what the D&D guys are for some of the other books. Maybe a quarter of the views and the, uh, the, uh, the page watchers. But they're decent books. They all kind of look the same, which, uh, you know... I don't mind the side looking the same, or the back looking the same, or even the border of the cover looking the same. But every book should kind of have their own own cover, you know, um, something that sets it apart from the rest. The look, perfect example was the first edition AD&D books. When easily start doing the covers, wow! I mean, every art cover was different but they all matched all the way through this series that he had done. Of course, there was always the previous old cartoony versions, um, the Red da Daemon on the front of the DMs, blah, blah, blah. But I thought the Easley ones were much better. Not as classic, but it's Easley. Come on. 15 bucks. That's not bad. 357 357 paste. 15. If they all do 15, I'll be happy. I thought a bunch of them were going to sell for 325 when I looked this morning. There was a whole bunch of them at 325. NPCs. This one might sell pretty well. I don't see too many NPC books. Uh, maybe a couple in my lifetime, but nothing that I can really recall off the top of my head. This is 356. Paste. And let's see what we have. Seven. One minute. There was one of these that was kind of rare. Um, I forget which one it is. We'll, all, we'll come up on, on it real soon, I'm sure. And then, I made a mistake. So, I listed two of these books. Volume 1 and 2 of the Prestige Classes. I had to pull the listing, relist it behind a couple of days. Um, I got the pictures been mixed up. Somehow, I don't know how I did it. It was confusing, my bitters. Um, so... I just pulled them down, I told the bidders, hey, I'm going to relist the books, it's still out a penny, you know, um, so you can still get it cheap, matter of fact, we're losing the watchers when I do that, so, you know, you're actually gaining a little bit of adv advantage, because we're losing the watchers, and watchers is you, you, you usually bidders, and what do we have, 1326, all right, not too bad. So it looks like we're already up to a couple hundred bucks today. Three, maybe? Four hundred? Alright. Not too shabby. We'll get rid of that. Maybe. Get rid of it. Now I don't know why it did this. But it didn't keep all the books exactly together. I got three miscellaneous ones in here. It's still by the same column company. Still cool books, but see, not doing quite so well. Let's see, 325. It's at 750, so it's doubled from this morning. Or actually, last time I refreshed that page was right at 4 o'clock. Just a little before 4 o'clock. So since four o'clock has gone up to the from three twenty-five to seven fifty, that's what I needed. Real, real bad. What was the number? Three sixty. Paste. And let's see.
Now, I don't know if I'm actually going to upload this video or not. Um, most likely I will. Um, but uploading takes a real long time. It might, <laughs> it might be 15, 16 hours to upload this, vi this video. But I'll try to get it done, you know. Basically, I do it for my own r r reasons like um, accounting. I'm adding all these things into my accounting sheet right now. Um, but if I miss something, if I make a mistake, I can actually go back and just watch the video and see what it end, end, ended for. I can go on eBay and look as well. But eBay will only keep those records for about three months and then they make it real tough to find. I can still find it, but I gotta go through old, in, old invoices by the day. Yeah, it's not the easiest thing to do. Basically, eBay keeps everything for the three months, and then after that, it gets rid of them. But you can recall them. Let's see, 360, 950, I think I already put that in. 950. Get rid of it. Go to the next book. Clark's. Hmm. Clark's Tom. And here we go. So yeah, this one kind of looks cool, might do kind of well. Sometimes I was hoping, or I was kind of hoping that, you know, the players would come on and look at like the Cleric's Tome or uh, the quintessential Cleric's Handbook 1 and 2, and then the uh, Cleric's Handbook for the AD&D 2nd Edition. You know, that that kind of people would get on, buy a couple of books, because it pertains to their character. Then during the miniatures thing, oh, I'm going to get a miniature for my character, so later on they can go ahead and get something for them and their friends um, and all the miniatures will go up at a penny a pop although I will admit I'm probably going to end up doing listings of uh, twos, threes, fives and tens and then a bunch of singles because we have thousands of miniatures coming up so we're going to have to do troops on some, some of them because they totally are painted and based uh, troop style um, for really old second edition D and D type fa 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 figures and stuff like that. Um, let's see. Let me put this in real quick. What was it? Eleven oh six. Yeah. And the next one is, I think this was the one I liked the most. Yeah, anytime I can get monster manuals, they they work for any game, really. Especially the D20, so they tend to go for a little bit more than the rest of the books. Which is really weird, because there's only one DM to every four or five players, generally speaking. So why the monster stuff would sell more is a little weird but maybe it was just ordered less in the day that therefore they're worth a little more but yeah players handbooks are usually a dime a dozen for every edition so those are never your best sellers as far as moving them quickly they might be because every player's got to ha have one but as far as big dollar amounts not quite so much all right so, 358 at 450, 1450. Let's see, what else? Get rid of that. Back to the ultimate books.
one minute and 20 seconds. Yeah, see, this was one of those ones that was at 325 for like a week. <laughs> the whole time they've been listed, it's been pretty much hovering right around there. Six watchers, I can't imagine there's going to be much advance. But we've done pretty well on the other ones, so we're going to have some stinkers. It's just the way it works. 355. one is this game game designers companion um don't know what the book actually is i didn't read it or anything like that but um some of the game designer type things can do pretty well once in a while um hero or dungeon builder's guide um things for the dungeon master to help him create ambiance in the game or whatever uh, those can do pretty well once in a while this one here is up in the air though I really have no idea Ooh, 325 come on 650 uh, 938 that almost tripled I'll take it And you know, if something does end up selling at a penny, then it didn't get the bids. Mines will sell that to the person for a penny that wanted it. If hundreds of people are looking at my eBay store today, tomorrow, the day after that, and they all keep passing up a listing and they don't want it, the one, one penny is what it's going to sell for cool somebody who really is going to enjoy that one product that no one else is can get it at a good deal all right you know we're going to do well on most of these books we can have a stinker once in a while it's not the end of the world and i always have my share of stinkers i think this is the rare one ah Let's see, 253, paste, and what, yeah, I think this was the rare one, I could be wrong, oh, two minutes, so yeah, this particular one is one where I had previously pulled an auction out, enlisted at a later date, because of the upper, and that's why we have a whole two minutes plus to look at this listing. Because the one that should have been ending right now was pulled, put later on. And, and you'll see it, I believe I believe it's Thursday it comes up. Uh, two books back, back, back to back, it'll both be ultimate books. It's the only two I screwed up on that I know of. Um... There was one other screw up that happened before the auction. Either I didn't update the pictures for a listing or which has happened to me a couple of times. eBay didn't take the new pictures. It used the pictures from the last listing. Um, used to be an issue. Not so much these days, but I have seen, I've seen it before. And so I sent a product out to the guy. And I sent another product out to the same guy. Once he got the second one, he wanted to return the first. I was like, what the hell? And he was like, I bought the wrong one. You made a mistake. I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, I did. So I told him, you know, send it back. I actually had told him uh, just to keep it. You know, I made the mistake. It's not worth sending back. Um, $6 shipping. We sold it for 21 bucks. You know, I might be able to sell it for 20 again, but he had already sent it out. The problem is, is for some reason, he didn't use the address that was uh, shipped to him on the box, the return address. He used one that eBay had given him, which was an old address, so it's off in Seattle. I don't live there anymore, and my old roommate got it. And we don't really converse, so that item's gone now. 
but that's it just two mistakes out of the 650 listings I've done so far it's not so bad now of course I'll know more once I ship these out and people get to look over them and then write back to me and tell me whether I screwed it up or not 29 I didn't think so That's pretty top of the end. I don't even think the book was that much when it originally was purchased or sold. Alright, okay. Goodbye. Next one. NPCs. We did that one already. Uh, arcane. Yeah, see, none of the other arcane books even got close to that expensive. So here's one. 732, I'm happy with that price, even if it ends there. 52, least. I'll stay in touch with you on Facebook. Alright, so 352, already on. I'm going to run outside here for just a second after this listing. I'm going to go ahead and even put 732 and do my jinxing thing on myself. Just to buy myself a couple extra seconds outside. So yeah, Feats, another Feats book. I have no idea how many people actually use these books these days. Um, but you know, if you're collecting the set, I've got most of that collection right here today. So if you're trying to fill in your spots, boom, you got it, you got it cheap. You know, you didn't have, have to pay full price or the ridiculously high prices on eBay sometimes, which is poss possibly and a lot to do with my own fault. I put the prices that, that high. Put them up, like I said, at a high price in the hopes that people will leave me alone or make an offer that's substantial um, so I can get other listings done. Ooh, 1550. That's. Shouldn't have jinxed myself. So. Boom. Well, actually, I should keep jinxing myself. This one might do okay, but I'm gonna run out. So. One minute and 20 seconds, 8.50. Six seconds, five, four, ten fifty, twenty one fifty. Wow. All right. All right. Paste. Twenty one fifty. And now see. As I'm doing this, I actually should be on yo YouTube right now, but we're having a hard time connecting, so I just recorded it instead. It's only a short day, not really a lot of reasons to go live, but 
Um, while I'm doing the live thing, I can just enter right into my spreadsheet here, you know. And then when the accounting is done, um, you know, at the end at the end of the night, I don't have to go back and do accounting for for this guy. I can hand him the list and say, hey, this is the selling price. Boom, boom, boom. Already done. And we get to talk about it over YouTube or a video. I get to flap my gums like I know something. Let's see. Magic items was last. Monsters. Love monster books. Matter of fact, I have a particular love of reading monster manuals. Um, my favorite one of all time is Monster Manual 2 from the original AD&D books. Um, the first one was good, the Red Dragon easily cover thing, that, that was neat. But that second one, the Forest Ogre, Orc, whatever it is, where he's in the forest, the cover is just fantastic. Um, looking over all the other D20 books, uh, the bestiaries, Mongoose actually has a fantastic fantastic one that I have coming up later I think actually in a couple of minutes let's see monsters 1850 um, oh, I didn't grab it damn it 350 1850 awesome yeah I think it's coming up a little later now see, we're getting towards the end of the page here. I'm actually gonna hit refresh, which I hate to do. But we have five, 652, and 605 are the first three books to come up. Now that I hit refresh, I'm gonna go all the way back to the top. Oh yeah, we're, all, we're almost done for day one. Like I said, it was a shorter day. Uh, looks like we had one little price go up. Character concepts. Let's see. Oh, oh, oh divine spell book. Look at that. Twenty-one fifty. Twenty-one fifty. Uh, Three forty-nine. That's what I thought. 2150 jinxing myself in hopes that I we get more bids. <laughs> so the spell books do do quite well. There's actually later on we'll come across the wizards compendium spell book things, uh, the mid sized books and ours the magic encyclopedia priest spell books. And some of those are going to do extremely well, especially the uh, Priest's Compendium Spellbook number three, I believe. Um, one of the few books that doesn't have initials in it, and it's a really spendy one. Twenty-two fifty. Yeah, see, I jinxed it, but I'll take the extra work for the dollar. Twenty-two fifty. Happy with that. Overall. This is working the way it's supposed to. I keep telling everybody, don't sell your collection in one big lot. It's a huge mistake. The very first person I ever did this for, um, way back in the day, I contacted a guy on, I believe it was Craigslist, and I told him, hey, I, uh, I see you have a bunch of... Uh, War, Warhammer miniatures and it was the the epic line for fantasy as well as the um, the epic for 40k so it was all 6 to 15 millimeter miniatures you know yeah you just tons of them brand new in the box he had some other things mixed in with it and he was asking a thousand, and I'm just going, oh my god, if I had the thousand bucks with me right now, I'd buy that in a heartbeat. 
Um, it's worth so much more. And he was having a hard time selling it. It was like I had $500 bid um, was the best offer I had, and I don't want to take that. So I was like, hey, just let me sell it. And he didn't want to do it. Two, three months went by of me kind of hounding him once in a while, and finally he gave, he gave in. And um, I took that collection, and within a month I'd flipped it all, cut him a check for a little over 6000 kept 3000 for myself, and boom, done. He was like, holy moly, and I said, yeah. It's not always what you have, although that is a lot to do with it, but it's how you sell something. And you do it the right way, and it's going to be a nice payday. Is it paste? Nah, I didn't grab it. 348. Copy. 2150. So, yeah, after he did that, I got another uh, D D D collection, did the same thing, and uh, it started working. Like, And I've always had to change things up through the years as eBay switched them over. There used to be this nice little banner ad across the top of my store where I could change it to only the things that were ending soonest. You know, so they, if you went to my store, you'd see that marching across the top of my page as they're ending. It was really nice. Boom, they do away with that, you know. Great, so I have to learn another new way to kind of not cheat the system, but use what is there to my advantage. And every couple of months, they seem to change it and just absolutely F with the program that I am doing, you know. But you kind of got to deal with it that's the business so which book are we on okay we got this one another quick little break oh 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 come on let's try it again copy 4351 remember what was that 243. Alright. So yeah, I'm just going to be pretty well silent here for a minute. Wait two seconds. Fifty. Anyway, that um, mongoose book that I was mentioning, the uh, the monster book, it's made by Mon mongoose, is coming up here in a couple of se seconds. I'll show you that one. Let's get this one in first. Twelve fifty. Twenty fifty. Dzam. Happy go lucky pretty awesome day so far I mean yeah we could have done better but we could have done a hell of a lot worse too so here's the immortals which is a Mon mongoose book as well um, here's the one that I was talking about the dark bestie every this thing is fantastic and in a minute we're gonna get to it I'll go over it a little more there 
the immortals uh, never really even read this one I've seen it a couple of times come through my shop it's going for more than I thought it would that's for sure 342 based 2150 there's another immortal book later on but I don't know what that is let's see if this actually jin jinxes me out it's a nice book um, by all means it's a pretty book just don't know anything about it I mean but the amount of game companies that are out there and every game I've played over the years you can't run across them all you know although I've done pretty damn well in the past like I said I've seen this one a few times just never picked it up and read it um, some of the mongoose stuff I really like some of it not so much um, Immortals I've just never been drawn to the immortal name I mean there's a model this model that different manufacturers have their own 26 Wow definitely gonna cause me to go back in there and redo that okay so here's that fantastic book I was talking about this thing is one of the prettiest monster manuals I've ever seen and some reason the plastic coating on the book the like glossy film that they kind of put on books well this one is literally like a film you know they lay it over the top kind of thing but it crackled I don't know if this was intentional or unintentional but the colors of this book, the crackle, the high gloss, all together, make this thing look fucking fantastic. Um, yeah, C51, way beyond what anyone else has sold it for. The other book that's similar to it, the Ravager book, um, the crackle didn't show up much. It's got a little in it, it looks nice, but this is just a beauty of a book it just it caught my eye right away i'd never seen it before the crackle i'm going all right is this damage isn't it damage how do i grade this fucking thing um but i just told them you know i told them what i saw what i liked about it i so in the description i did put let's see cover wear is uh, light with most of the gloss present however there is a crackle to this cover um, from some sort of film gloss looks awesome but I have no idea how how it was made corners are showing light wear some light bumping blah 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 you know basic so that sold for $51 wow And that's what's going to happen when you list everything individually. You're going to have, some books are going to do fantastic. Sometimes a regular old stupid book has got to be had by two people at the same time. And they'll just raise the price on it just because they want it now and then. So you get all these little winners, these losers, they average themselves out. As long as you did the hardcore work mean well ship well um you know have a love for doing this kind of thing um you should do well you know you take every precaution um when i was one of my events i kept telling people don't settle for coming to my game swap meets and relying on the traffic that i get put your own listing in craigslist tell them where you're going to be at what day um, if everybody at my show 110 vend vending tables all do that little bit the event gets big because every little person you reach out to is another potential boom 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 people start showing up but you really it comes down to 
who goes after it if you just list it put it on on ebay yeah you might do well you know but if you're constantly working at it, it's like anything else um, you might not be the most athletic person in the world you start playing baseball every fucking day for 20 years you're going to acquire a fair amount of skill in it you might not ever be as uh, big as an A-Rod or a Mike Schmidt or a Claudia Ustramski because you didn't start off with the talent pool that they had but you you can get there you can totally get there and this is the same thing um, yeah you want one price you're gonna take a huge hit um, sell your collection some guy's gonna turn around flip it make a bunch of cash and go boy was that guy dumb I'm the person in the middle I'm the person that says all right you didn't like the price that you were offered let me sell it my way I'll probably get you more money than the offer most of the time I think there's one or two times since I've been doing this I haven't but that was painted miniatures and that's a whole different beast um, if you're not a really good painter then miniatures painted don't do that well but yep that's pretty much it so here's the second book of this which is probably already ended for me flapping 1950 that's not bad same thing little bit of crackle not really as nice the colors aren't as per perfect but it does look good and that was 340 at 1950 and I think we are closing in on day one. Oh, 1950. Bestiary. Here's the other immortal book. Wow. Oh, that's way higher than I thought it would go for. Sometimes I get. <laughs> I. I do believe I've sold this at um, my shows, my conventions. Basically, it's a swap meeting. But I believe I've sold these for a dollar a pound. Um, when I was doing my events, because I had such a large, you know, kind of used game store, um, all these role-playing books, I just, I just had tons of them out at a dollar a pound, you know. Um, miniatures when it came to little little pieces of miniatures bits and parts um, I was charging 650 an ounce on on those or was it 10 something like that I was charging per ounce or per pound and people were just filtering through them. every show I did fantastic especially the Warhammer bits I'd have bins and bins of these bits and people would just pull through them grab the backpacks or whatever that they do need so 1306 is pretty good for that book and oop, what was the number 339 1306 hey paste not, not nothing to paste copy paste 13 Oh, six. Anything else for today? I think that was the last book for today. Oh, no, no. We still have a couple more. This one here was another one that would be in the dollar per pound of my events. So, just selling at 225 not the end of the world. Two three thirty eight paste. Cheap book. We wow. Seven oh one. I toss these in sometimes, you know. What with a cheap book like this at least. This one went okay this time. But I think I've sold these for uh, a penny before. Um sometimes it's the advertising factor that's worth the listing like yeah maybe I didn't make much money off of this listing but 27 people viewed it that means 
maybe five or six of them were scrolling through the eBay listings, popped across this one, and maybe that's where they read I had tons of other stuff up for sale um, in this particular genre of gaming. So, was the 10 cent listing worth it? Well, yeah, we made some money, so that's not that bad. But was the 10 cent listing worth it for the people it pulled into my auctions? That's where I say I really won. At 10 cents, um, which is what it cost me to do a, a basic listing, um, is really pay, paying off. Now, I have 355 listings left in this particular round um, of auctions. So that's 355 advertisements at 10 cents piece. And that's part of the reason why my system works, or at least I like to think it does. Maybe there's other eBayers out there that can do actually a little better than I can. Or maybe you're just willing to let these sit in your store a long time. Um, but with me, I'm selling on commission. The person wants their money in a specific time frame. They actually, most of them, wanted all their money up front. Boom, I sell the collection, boom, and you can do what you want. But I don't have 25000 bucks to buy these kind of collections, you know. Um, I could build up that much, but usually I have a couple thousand I can kind of work with. So when somebody brings me a too big a collection, but that's where it works in their advantage though you know um, yeah they're not gonna have to take that huge hit they're gonna get more of a percentage of their mon their money if I sell this for them it's hard as hell to convince them of, of, of it but the people that have seen me do it time and time again are pretty calm confident hey you know this guy's the system works it's, it's not bad it, you, he brings home the prices that we're expecting, you know, some win, some lose. Yeah, it's the way it's the way the game goes. But did we beat the averages? And today was a success. Um, I wouldn't say a huge success. We just sold some crap games, you know. We sold some hum hum hungos. Nothing really breaking down the doors as far as collectible, you know. They're not fucking moon boots from the 50s or 60s. Um, but they're newer, past 10, 20 years, a lesser known brand, and all those did pretty well. I mean, this deck of many things that I'm looking at right now, 039, so I'm going to be way up. I mean, that's selling fantastic right now. And we have the Deck of Illusions coming up right behind it, which is just as rare. Not quite as well known. I mean, Dungeons and Dragons is always... We all know about the Deck Many Things. It's been over years and years and years. Every every uh, version that they've come out with from, uh, what was it, Dragon Magazine, number 181, I think it is, or 183, somewhere right in there, um, had the little deck of many things in there and then D, D has made their own versions this particular version is by green ronin um and this seems to be kind of rare it's like an official D, &D product made by games uh made by uh green ronin seems a little weird but Maybe it's not the same deck of many things. Maybe it's not the official D&D &D one. I'm not quite sure. I looked at it just to make sure that the cards were all all there, you know. There's a little wear in the box. Not that bad. You know, some people, they play with their stuff. And that's why the really high-end stuff is super collectible. Because all, the, all these games that I sell pe pe people play you know it's not just a collector thing like comic books you buy it you read it once you usually and even if you do that like sometimes you'll buy three copies of the same one 
read one, have have the other the other two, you know, kind of thing. Um, but it's not quite as bad. Like I said, it's playable, so the conditions are generally going to be less, especially since the um, the age of uh, collectible supplies. Um, when I was a kid, they really didn't have baseball card. Um, actually, I think baseball card boxes were just really starting to be made with sleeves and stuff like that in the 70s, early 80s. You had team set bags and you had a couple of hard cases and stuff like that. But then in the 90s, you just seen this explosion of supplies and things to keep things in good condition. So the deck commend many things for seventy eight dollars. That's that's pretty good. It was at twenty five this morning. So seventy eight dollar. Let me see here. Oh. Deck of Illusions. This one, like I said, is a little more rare. I've seen these sell for a little higher than the deck of many things. Um, usually a couple less for sale. So this one might go up. I think that's kind of pressing it. That's, we should be happy. A little bit of damage on this one. Um, you know, it is what it is. But it is pretty sought after obviously it's selling for 77 13 watchers that's pretty good 038 let's go to 038 paste and I'm gonna say 77 just because I don't think that's gonna advance possible but I don't know And then I think we only have a couple more listings and we're done for the night. I'll work on invoices at the end of every night once the last item is sold. So yeah, 777, I was right. Once the last item is sold, um, I go and I send out the invoices to ev everyone who won something for the day. They do not have to pay. I only want them to pay once they start the three-day shipping process. If they pay tonight, three days from now, their items will go out. But if they don't pay, which is fine with me, that's the way I want it to work, keep winning new items each night, and then once you're all done, you pay for your items, but at least you'll get that new invoice every single night with the updated shipping, if you choose to pay it you can if you don't want to you don't need to blah 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 makes it a lot easier on me sometimes I have these guys who pay for every single book individually and then I gotta go back and figure out how many now in the past eBay um, didn't combine shipping really well when they've all were already paid so I was sending them out on a one order basis kind of and then I'd get like four or five away and go fuck this guy ordered another book. Why didn't he wait for the invoice so he could save on shipping? Now I have to give them a refund on top of it as well as you know make the mistake once in a while sent out two boxes when it could have been one. All these little things cost money. You want to minimize them the best you can. You want your customers to be able to you know, know what to expect from you and you know what to expect from them to make this work real smooth. But let's see, Toma Hovers, this is the second one. Um, the first one was awful as far as condition goes. I had to say it in, in there, we'll come across it here in a little bit. Um, $26, that one sold, $285. I'm going to have to scroll way down. 285. Paste. And that was $26. That's a good price for that one. Next one is... 
the real Tomb of Horrors, which is the first one. Oh, 26. I hope they read the listing. This is what scares me, is that people don't actually read the description. Um, cover wear, the corners. Uh, binding is unglued from the cover. The front and back leaves are holding it in together fine. However, it's not glued to the one inch binding edge to the color. So basically, if you were to hold the pages and kind of pull them away from the binder, they come out only the two, the very first inside cover and backside cover pages are holding the book in. Um, so if you wanted to, you could actually drop a pencil between the page's edge on the binding side and the edge of the cover, that one inch border, that's the edge, and drop a pen just in between it, it'd go right through. Um, you could totally glue it. Professional gluing is much better. I go into a book guy, get it done. It'll turn out per perfect. You can do it at home and you can do a good job. But I've seen it done at home and I've seen it done a really bad job. So just go into an average book binding place. Say, hey, how much for you to glue, glue this in real quick? They'll make quick work of it, super cheap, and it'll be done right to where you can sell the book later on. You might want to mention that you had that done. But you can at least say, oh, you know, it's a good solid book. It is, what I said, $31. Now, I hope they don't get too mad, but I put it I put it down, you know. I tell them what's there. You just have, have to read it. You look at the pictures, you're going to pay the price once in a while. And that uh, price sometimes affects me. What was that, 284 267 Yikes. Try that again. All right, and then the last one of these. Nope, we have the tone. So we have this is the last book for today. The Illusionism. Um, last Toma Hara is the third one. This one should sell pretty well. that high I had it in my store at 79 but like I said I keep my prices really high in my shop before the auction starts this is almost at that that's that's a good price for that book my uh, my guy should be pretty ha happy with me for that one 266 paste $68, I think it was. Wow. It's a sword and sor sorcery book. Sword and sorcery... Uh, people kind of look at it like Dungeons and Dragons. It's kind of compatible. It's kind of like saying Tunnels and Trolls just a modern day version tunnels and trolls was kind of synonymous with D, D back in the 70s and the 80s um that brand name Tun tunnels and trolls has kind of gone away over the, the years sword and sorcery kind of took its place there's another one like castles and corruption or something i forget what the other one is uh, i've got a couple of them for sale but that is a fantastic price. Happy with that. Happy, happy. Alright, Tomaharis 3. If any one of them should go up, it's this one. But, that's eBay. You just never can tell. Like, it should already be above 2050. I mean, that's not a loss. I think. $30 was the listing price. Let me see. 34 was the original price. So we're almost... We're a little more than half, half, halfway. It's in pretty good condition. I think I listed it at 90 so... That's not so bad. Maybe just nobody needs it. 
264. Paste. Fifteen seconds. Come on. This is a nice book. This should be in the thirty thirty range. Usually like the third book is a little harder to find, especially with monster manuals and <gasps> Oh, really? Ah, that's not bad though. It's just not a super winner like the other ones. Like somebody paid more for a bad condition book than they paid for the Yep, that's eBay for ya. There's a very randomness to it that you just can never avoid. Ah, the Ships of Elves, another boat thing. Nothing too uh, fancy here. 336. <coughs> right here, paste. And while I'm waiting, let's go over what's for tomorrow. So tomorrow um, will be Tuesday. First items up for bids are some Star Wars Whiz Kids cards. Little miniature game, you punch out of cards. Um, a bunch of them built, a couple of rares. Uh, the Millennium Falcon is here, which is really expensive. It's only at 225 right now. That should go between the 30, the 25 and 30 range. If it doesn't do so well, it could actually go as low as four or five. Um, I would expect that it's going to sell for more, but can't always go. These were all named up, all initialed like the books were. Um, they're pre-built, the cards don't come with them, so there's little use for these, but, you know, like I said, those 10 cent advertising listings will get people into my store, and this kind of takes care of that, plus, I can tell the guy, hey, I honestly sold it, we tried, we did what we were supposed to do, we put it up, we listed it, we tried and if it doesn't get the money, it's not worth it. I can understand why a bunch of punched cards aren't doing that, that well, especially if they're all initialed, somebody else's initials all on the bottom side of it. But at the same time, if you're a card collector, you're going, hey, I don't want to punch out all, all my cards, you know, um, so why don't I just go ahead and buy all these ones that are already built and play with those. Um, and cheap, you know, get them real cheap and not punch my stuff and hold them as collect as collector things. You know, we do have one Pirates of the Spanish Main um, card. Kind of rare. I was getting between 20 and 30 bucks for these when I was listing them with other boats. But now that it's by itself, probably won't do that well. 645 for this book. 6.45 and the last book of the night will be Illusionism already worth more than I would have sold it for otherwise again this would have been a book that would have been in my dollar per bin uh, dollar per pound bin at my shows but you know that was a couple, a couple of years ago that's on the spot so 335 put this here pasty paste but then after the Star Wars comes um, oh there's an old mech one to uh, a tournament kit that'll be worth something um, the Star Wars cards that come along with this card game. This is actually a real steal. Um, there's good foil cards in here. You need them to play, but you know, this is enough to keep you busy for a while. 250 cards. I think there's 20 foils in there, maybe 25, something, something like that. Um, 
I sold a couple of these at 39 and 40 bucks um, or 29 and 40 bucks a while back when they were in my store I had three of them up sold two of them this was the last one really bummed out it's not getting more but eh, you know it's not really the pop popular game the book game is the Star Wars one really isn't um, cool game though I mean it's fun it's real simple so little kids that want to learn how to play uh, you know above shoots and ladders and other skill games like that you know or little skill games like that this is the next step up this is not playing with the big boys yet but you're right into that hey eight to ten years old twelve years old this is the kind of game for them um, thing so let's see we have um, a couple of the modules com coming up from uh, free gank games day then we run down into the Goodman games which um, this is just a bunch of modules I'll show you here on page two no. all my auctions ended I gotta go back to page one now oh and it did end I didn't catch it in time. Shit. And, and, and anyway, I'll go back and get that last one here in a second. After the Goodman games tomorrow will be, um, and there's an ICE game here, 10 mil million ways to die. Very rare. Doesn't usually sell for a real lot, but they can. It's kind of one of those, you see them sell for 20, you see them sell for 70. You'll see it sell for five, you'll see it sell for 70, it's, yeah, it's kind of all, all over the place. But it is hard to find, and it's by Iron Crown, which is just fantastic. Um, we have Fast Forward Entertainment. A whole run of these books um, are com coming up. Good 15, 7, 17 of them. Look like really good books, nice red covers. I was actually enjoy enjoyed fl fl flipping through these. Um, don't know that much about them. More of those map packs, which if they did like they did today, look, these are all still in the low threes and twos and threes and twos, blah, blah, blah. We got a couple of EverQuest books. These ones should do pretty well. Um... Not, not, nothing too fancy. This one's a little rare. The Monsters one. That can sell for some good money. The Player's Handbook, 20 bucks is kind of... 20 to 40 is its range. Uh, tile Packs for Dungeons & Dragons Official. Um, start ending tomorrow. And these should go way up. I'm hoping. Um, lots of watchers on these. You have the um, I call them fifth edition versions. The black, the black ones. I don't actually know if they are fifth edition, but they have that logo kind of like like they are. But that logo does stem all the way back to fourth. These are the fourth edition ones that I know about. These are I've always called them fourth, and these ones sell extremely well. So we'll have all those coming up. Um, more Pathfinder mats. A whole bunch of those. And then... Um, day three will be... The handbooks. Which the quintessential ones are just as cool. Um, I expect these will go up. They're not very well liked. But if you're playing a mage... You've got two more of these. You can get the sorcerer, the gnome, the drow. There's, you know... Bob, Bob Barian, I probably have Bob Barian 1. Um, quintessential, maybe, maybe not. I know I have the Bob Barian for the handbooks, boom. Which is kind of a harder one to find. So this one should do well. And we have a lot of these quintessential handbooks. So if you're playing a specific class, then up, oh, yeah, yeah, there, there, there it is then you might want to pick up a couple of these nothing too special got some dice sets big dice lot here we've got the very rare 
royal purple uh, Bor Borealis dice. These should sell quite well. 51 isn't what they should end at. They should be somewhere in the 100, 200 range. I graded them kind of heavy. I was kind of mean on them because the paint was outside of the number lines just a little bit and it didn't look like a crack to me which is good I felt it my fingernail wasn't catching anything but I would have had to clean clean it up and that takes time so the pictures didn't make them look half as good as they are in real life it was just tough um, they didn't picture well like the rest of the sets did don't know why I've tried everything low light medium light high light go outside sunlight nothing really caught and then we get into the D&D &D, like the third edition later on we'll start getting into the second edition um, some more mongoose books will pop up some deadlands pirates of the Spanish main um, role-playing game definitely something that somebody should check out it's at 22 cents right now. It's an absolute shame. Um, some more of the ultimate books. Those will go up again. Um, or at least this one will. Um, Cyberpunk. We have a nice little run of Cyberpunk coming up. Um, including one of the expensive box sets. Here's where things get a little mean. Um, the Wizard Spell Compendiums. These are already going for a good price. The Priest one that volume three I was talk, talk, talking about earlier already at 102 and that can go up this is an unreal condition copy of this book no initials things are gonna go good or maybe maybe it won't go more but a hundred bucks is already damn good so I'm not too hurt about that um, the magica books I'm missing most of the gold lettering on the side. They're pretty well worn down at the edge. But if you're just a player, boom, this is your chance to get them. Where, you know, yeah, you're not going to get the high-end high ones, but if you plan to play them and use them anyway, you might as well get the lower-end ones and use the shit out of them, right? So, we've got that. We've got um, Forgotten Realms bunch there's the second edition books coming up a little later on this week um more of those second edition uh little books some good stuff here you see this particular face in Ablatar's book just stuck out to me for some re 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 reason i'm going through the books this one seemed cool and it's already going for 1551 which lets me know I'm not out of my mind yeah there's something I like about this one maybe maybe somebody can tell me why I like this one so much or what the, or what it's about Lankmar has both the book the booklet and the map so that's awesome it's not in the best condition but good standard and then we get on to that last night is all the first edition books which really isn't that much um, we sold a couple of them beforehand and really isn't that many first edition books anyway <laughs> um, but we do have them or oriental adventures was particularly nice not so much the cover the cover was okay it's not bad the pages were beautiful though i was actually really impressed it's like what well, how is it the book is kind of banged up a little and then you look at the pages it's almost like they've never been touched like I was yeah I was pretty impressed oh and there's the best monster manual ever if you ask me out of all the books this is the classic this was the very first Dungeons and Dragons product I ever picked up on a shelf at Walden bookstore remember going in after finding out about D, D, went in with some money this player's dungeon manual uh or the dungeon master's guide the players 
Monster Manual 2, Monster Manual 1, they didn't have that day. Um, and I think I got Manual of the Planes that day, which I wish I had right now. Um, sells for big bucks, which was weird because it was always the book that nobody ever actually touched. Kind of like, yeah, hey, we got it. What's it for? I don't know. Look, 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 look at the color, though. It's real cool. Yeah, yeah, it is cool. But yeah, that's the single best Monster Manual book, I think, ever. And it ranks in my top maybe 10 or 15 D&D &D products of all time. But yeah, let me go back and see if I can actually find what that one book sold for. Get it into the thing, into my spreadsheet, and we'll call it done for the day. I might take this live tomorrow. <laughs> If I can upload the video before the, the, the new day comes. Um, I don't know if I will be able to do that. Let's see. We'll go to my eBay. Orders. Uh oh. Orders, orders, orders. Oh. That is not do shipping. That guy asked me to set it aside for him to uh, keep, keep bidding. Let's see. Awaiting pay payment. Should be the first book. Yep. Right there. So that actually sold for 10.06. I'm happy with that. Ooh, I did it before. Did anything. 3.35. Oh, I did that. 10.06. And that's it. That's going to conclude what I'm doing for today. Um, we'll do it again tomorrow. Hopefully we'll do it live. But, yeah, because I don't want to do a six-hour video and try to upload it for three and a half days. So, we'll try to do it live. Um, hopefully this will be up before, but... I don't really expect anybody to be watching these anyway. We're just trying to get some raw data, show customers how the process goes, and if people want to sell their collections, come to me. We'll get it done. All right, thanks for watching. Um, we'll see you tomorrow or in part two.